And so the next topic I wanted to kind of talk about, you know, coming off of this idea of, you know, chefs now and cooks and how we got our food, um, soul food. It's really this nice kind of umbrella term that really got popularized in the 60s. And it's a way of encapsulating this unbroken line of African heritage of food into America. And it really just speaks to the ingredients that are used as well as the seasonings that we enjoy. So a part of the black cultural identity arguably is tied to food. Um, this presumption that food is always delicious, that culinary skills are naturally attributed to the black community, um, as you can maybe see, is a bit of a broken conversation of understanding where the skills of cooking came from. You know, as we've now discussed, slaves were chefs. Um, slaves were brought to France to learn French culinary skill. You know, slaves were forced to teach their skills to new chefs in order to get freedom, um, their own family members. And so I think we can now maybe a little more easily see this idea of black people can cook, of where maybe it came from. And that, yes, maybe it's true sometimes, most of the time, a lot of the time, but I think that this automatic cultural connection um, erases the technique and the hard work um, that went into perfecting these skills and passing down these skills and making them better and fusing them with the culture of America. You know, it's, I think that a social capital should be given to the to black community in terms of their contributions to what food is known to be and that this idea of soul food um again being traditionally thought of in terms of not good for you um filled with meats and fried foods is actually re taking it very very far from its roots traditionally in african cuisines there wasn't a ton of meat. Um, it was a lot of vegetables, a lot of legumes, um, and meat was enjoyed every once in a while. It was a treat. It wasn't a staple in every meal. Um, so plant-based was a lot of soul food back in the day when you actually trace it back in terms of the recipes that were being used. And so I think when soul food gets erased from being tied to African culture, just as much as the idea of Southern hospitality gets taken away from the ideals of black African servitude, um, we're doing a disservice to the culture. We're doing a disservice to the people that got us there. We do a disservice to people like Roberts who wrote books on how to be hospitable, you know, um, to Fisher who wrote all of the things we know on how to make jams and jellies and preserve um, to people like Carver who were looking for ways to optimize the nutrition that was found in our foods that weren't native to America, um, but were needed here. And so I think it's important to maintain those ideals of, you know, good soul food cooking or good Southern hospitality um, and not take it away from the history of where it came from and that African slaves were finding their place in this white dominated world through food. Um, because as it became known, you know, the house with the good food had people over. And when people were over, conversations were happening, which is today's networking. Soul food is this umbrella term that's kind of been popularized in the 1960s as a way of kind of knowing black food influences. But what that really does is it erases that direct connection, that lineage, that cultural identity that ties black African slaves of America to Africa. The way that those influences were then changed and influenced by people like Hemings who then traveled to France and brought that culinary experience. And so when you bring that fusion along with the unique ingredients and the unique applications of dealing with food, you get soul food.